Hi, welcome to our video on the peripheral nervous system. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is this a video on peripheral nervous system when I'm trying to study pharmacology? Well, I'm gonna give you the secret to understanding how all the peripheral nervous system drugs work. This is gonna be an overview of the PNS and you're gonna love it by the time we're done because it's gonna make getting ready for an exam that much easier. Let's back up and start and look at the nervous system as a whole. Okay, so we've got the nervous system and it breaks into two parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system, you know, goes right down the center of your body. We're talking about the brain and spinal cord. That's what makes up the central nervous system. Now the peripheral nervous system comes off that spinal cord and it goes all the way out to all to the other parts of my body. Now part of the peripheral nervous system is the somatic or the autonomic. Now somatic motor system, we kind of have control of that. That's why you see the word voluntary there. With the autonomic motor system, we don't have control of that. It's on autopilot. Now that breaks down into two more, the sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest. Now I don't wanna go past this slide too quickly because you need to make sure that you have all these pieces clear in your mind. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video right here and see if you can see how all these pieces fit together by just sketching it out in your own handwriting. Start with the nervous system, break it down into CNS and PNS, then you've got the SNS and the ANS, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Try it two or three times, look at your notes when you need to, but it's critically important before we move on in the video that you understand how all these parts of the nervous system fit together. Now one more note, before we go on, the sympathetic nervous system is that response ah, in your body. If I was about to step out into traffic and I saw a truck was about to hit me, that's that response that my body gets. I'm either gonna fight or I'm going to flight. I'm gonna try and run is what I'm gonna try to do if I'm gonna get hit by a truck. That's the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic nervous system is when I'm totally at rest, I can just focus on eating a big fat meal, and that's why we call it rest and digest. So those are two key components of the autonomic nervous system that we're gonna look at, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Okay, autonomic, remember that's on autopilot. I don't have much control of that. My body takes care of it without me having to think about it. And it's really kind of a good thing because I don't have to think about controlling my blood vessels. My body just does that for me. Liver and lungs. Can you imagine what life would be like if I had to think every minute, breathe in, breathe out, make cholesterol, breathe in, breathe out, make clotting factors. Yeah, I don't wanna have to worry about all that stuff. So that's a good thing that liver and lungs are also under autonomic control. Now your stomach and intestines are under that control as are your kidneys and your bladder. You also have sweat and salivary and digestive glands. These are all things that are really important that I don't have to think about controlling. Now the last one gets kind of personal. It's the genitals and the autonomic nervous system plays a role in that. So these are the processes that the ANS controls. We talked about the systems. Now we're gonna boil it down to processes. It controls your blood pressure. Really good thing we don't have to think about that. It controls your heart and breathing rates. It has your heart speed up when you need it and your lungs bronchodilate in that fight or flight. And it also can slow things down when you're calm. It controls your body temperature. It also controls the balance of water and electrolytes in your body. Things like sodium and calcium, how much water I hang on to, how much water I get rid of. It also talks about the production of body fluids, how dry my mouth is gonna be, how much saliva is developed, sweat and my tears, helps me with digestion, decides how much I'm gonna pee and how much I'm gonna exit the other way of my body and a sexual response. So when you look at this, the autonomic nervous system is amazing. From blood pressure to sexual response, it's involved in all of these processes. Now we put this up here just to show you, wow, look how complicated this can be. We're gonna give you a very simple framework to look at for the autonomic nervous system, but looking at that diagram, you can see how complex the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems are. So, let me give you a tip. Here's a much more straightforward way to look at it. 
Okay, take a deep breath, because I'm gonna walk you through what you need to know about the peripheral nervous systems. Let's compare the sympathetic to the parasympathetic in a much more straightforward graphic than we just showed you. Okay, when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated, I'm gonna walk through what happens head to toe. So first of all, the pupils will dilate. Remember with the sympathetic nervous system, this is fight or flight. I'm really scared, something, I'm gonna to respond to something. That's what the sympathetic nervous system is. So my pupils are going to dilate. My mouth is gonna get kind of dry because the saliva flow is gonna be cut off. My heart rate, boom, 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 is gonna to start to go up. My airways are gonna relax and they're gonna bronchodilate. My stomach is gonna shut down. My liver is gonna put out glucose and my gallbladder is also going to relax. Okay, now what I gave you is just a list of things that there's probably no way you're gonna remember. Let's go back through that list and show you a way that you can. Let's say that you're in danger. What kind of response would you need from your body? I just realized I'm gonna to have to run for my life. Well, my pupils are gonna dilate so I can see. My mouth is gonna dry up because I don't need a lot of saliva because I'm not gonna be stopping to eat because remember, I'm in danger. My heart rate is gonna step up because I need my heart to pump faster and harder because I need it to push more blood around because I'm gonna use these muscles. So I need lots of extra oxygen to be delivered to my tissues. Now, because I need lots of extra oxygen, that's why my lungs bronchodilate. I'm not gonna be tying up energy digesting things. That's why my stomach shuts down because I need to focus all my energy on getting out of here. Now my liver is gonna put out glucose because that's stored energy. In a sympathetic nervous system response, I'm in trouble. I need more energy so the liver <coughs> squirts that out into my bloodstream. Now I want my gallbladder to relax because I don't want it squirting out bile because I'm not eating. I'm running for my life. So when you think about the sympathetic nervous system from head to toe, think about all your energy going into what it would take to run as fast as you can. Faster heart rate, bronchodilation, shutting down things we don't need like eating and your stomach and your gallbladder. And we need that extra energy. That's why liver puts out the glucose. Now parasympathetic is the complete opposite of sympathetic. Everything that happens in the sympathetic, the opposite happens in the parasympathetic system. Remember, in the sympathetic system, your pupils dilated. In the parasympathetic, they constrict. My mouth gets really dry in the sympathetic system, but in the parasympathetic system, I have increased saliva. Remember we called this rest and digest. I'm not under any danger in a parasympathetic when I'm under parasympathetic control. I'm chill, I'm laid back. I'm getting ready for a big fat celebration meal, right? My heart rate is slow, unlike the sympathetic where it was super fast. My airways don't have to bronchodilate because I don't need that much oxygen. I'm resting. My stomach is gonna really start moving. Remember in the sympathetic nervous system, it shuts down because it was diverting energy to getting out of there, to getting to safety. But in a parasympathetic response, my stomach is active because I'm getting ready to digest a lot of food. Now the liver and the sympathetic put out glucose. But in the parasympathetic, it puts out bile because it's getting ready to digest that food that I'm eating. And that's why the gallbladder contracts. Because remember, all the gallbladder is is just a warehouse for stored bile. So rest and digest in parasympathetic is the opposite response of what we see in sympathetic. Now it'd be a really good use of your time if you stop here and see if you can kind of play with these lists and make sure you see how they all fit together. Try quizzing yourself and look at the exercises we have for you in the downloadable material to make sure you're solid on the responses that are sympathetic and the responses that are parasympathetic.